Oh, oh, ah. and there she goes right away. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I am in Lucy's cage right now and we're gonna get this vlog started just by feeding my girl Lucy. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. When I start my day feeding a huge snake, you know it's gonna be a good one. Come on Lucy, you ready girl? You wanna eat a nice rabbit? Come on sweetheart, there you go. Come on, come on girl, come on girl. I know you're hungry. Come on, come on, you got it. Come on girl, oh, there you go girl, good job. Way to go. <laughs> Doggy, it never gets old. I don't know how many thousands of times I've fed big snakes like my girl Lucy here each and every time I absolutely love it. But I wanna make one thing clear. As much as I love feeding all snakes, I just think it's one of the most incredible things on the planet. I have said this before and I'll continue to say it that I don't like feeding animals to other animals. I get no joy out of seeing an animal die or get fed up. That's why I never show live feeding on the vlog. Yes, we do feed snakes live, but I will not use that as entertainment to try to get views or whatever the case may be. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be totally honest with you. In the last 20 years, I have never watched a snake ever eat a live meal. When a snake does need to eat live, I'll put it in. I keep an eye on it to make sure that the snake doesn't get harmed, but as soon as it strikes at it, I walk away. I don't want to see that. I don't get enjoyment out of seeing a snake eat another animal or any animal eat other animals, but that is nature and that's the way things go. With that said, I think that a snake like Lucy is absolutely amazing and seeing the force of that power feed is truly breathtaking. I mean, just take a look at that animal right there. Who doggy, that's amazing. Pretty heavy pack day here at BHB. Lori's got a ton of shipments going out. Looks like we've got some really cool corn snakes here, some Puebla milk snakes, and some more corn snakes here. Even some garter snakes. Oh, these guys are so gorgeous. Oh, a scaleless Texas rat snake, a bunch of leopard geckos. I know she has a bunch of ball pythons packed, so uh, she definitely has a busy day today. These are all the ball pythons that are gonna be going out today. In particular, this one kind of got me a little sad. This is a little tiny micro smiley face. You guys know I love smiley pies. This one has a little tiny smiley right there. It's absolutely good. So whoever's getting that, uh, congratulations. I absolutely love that. But we actually have a handful of pies going out, including this really high white female pie here that is absolutely incredible. We also have this pastel mimosa ball python right here, which of course is pastel, it's ghost or hypo, and it's also champagne. Pain. Here's just a two bang animal here. This is actually a pastel yellow belly. And I remember loving pastel yellow belly since the first time we produced them way back in the day. I just think that that combination is absolutely stunning. And it's a couple mutations that when you breed into other mutations really make some incredible, incredibly beautiful paint jobs. And <laughs> doggy, look at this here. This is actually an Enchi Kingpin. Oh my gosh. So that is an Enchi, it's a pinstripe, and it's a lesser. And together, that that makes a stunning snake. And speaking of stunning, this is actually a dragonfly here, which is a fire, a pastel, and a lemonless. But this one has really wide pattern in it, making it really unusual and really cool. And lastly, we have this animal that is super clean and really beautiful. This is actually an Enchi Het Russo. Now the Russo stuff is the ones that make that white snakes, the blue-eyed leucistic, but they really clean things up. So it's interesting, the Het Russo and the Enchi are both kind of that enhancing cleaner gene and together they are a stunning, stunning snake. Eating a handful of things today, but I'm actually gonna turn over butterscotch to yep. Noah and Let's Eric. Do it. Let's do it. Uh, nothing could go wrong there. The reason I'm having them feed her is that this is the one cage that I hate feeding because she's a face biter. So oh, man. Uh, so you guys should be good. So uh, that'll be over on Noah's channel. I'll put a link in the description. And if Eric survives, uh, you'll see him later on in the vlog. Next girl I'm gonna feed is this girl here who is definitely ready for food. This is actually Sunfire, and this will be her first rabbit ever. We always just feed her large rats, but she's getting pretty big now, and she is so gorgeous. I cannot wait till the snake gets 15 or 18 foot, because she is one of the prettiest retics I have, maybe outside of Perdita. So let's see if she takes this rabbit, and trust me, she is a very, very intense feeder, so this should be pretty fun. Here you go, girl. You want it? You want it, girl? Here you go, girl. Do you want it? Do you want it? It doesn't look like she wants it. Sometimes transferring from rats to rabbits, that can happen. Look at her go! Woo 
She is one of the fastest snakes too. Look at her, she's all the way up there already on the other side of the cage. So I think I'm gonna have to feed her a rat because I want to get her going, but uh, no rabbit for her today. Come on girl, you want a rat instead? You get an idea of the difference of the smell. Sometimes with rabbits when they're switching, they just won't eat, but then you just offer them a rat and they should just take it right away. Come on girl, come on girl. You want this? Oh, oh, ah, and there she goes right away. It's pretty amazing how these animals can have such a different response to different prey items. She took that rat right away, but she had nothing to do with the rabbit. So we'll just keep feeding her rats and eventually she'll switch over to rabbits. And But what a beautiful snake. I've been having Noah and Eric feed some stuff, so we're having a good time with that. They're gonna feed Perdita next, right? Mm -hmm, that's so, right. Uh, go Thank for you. it, guys, yeah. go for it. All right, so right. what we can do here. Ooh, Ooh here we go. Yourself, Come on, Perdita. Man, her face is the best. Oh, oh, that was a Floyd Mayweather yeah, strike. Yeah, that was, man. Oh, that was. So what's this crazy story? Dude, it's so, it's just so crazy. I started a saltwater aquarium a few weeks ago. Just haven't had the best luck, okay? We get these little shrimp. They're so cool. They're so fun to watch. Go around. They're cleaning the fish and everything. Oh, is it going to be okay with the hawkfish? Oh, they'll be fine. Well, one of my shrimp goes missing. I find the little legs, and I'm like, it's not looking good. Right when I'm telling that to Mary, bam! Hawkfish comes up and swallows the other one down. What? $70 meal right what? there. What? They were 70 bucks? Yeah. Yep. And they ate them. You had two of them? Two of them. Ate oh them right my down. Gosh. And then two weeks before that, my puffer fish died. Oh my gosh. Don't oh salt water. Gosh. Yeah, Don't Mar do it. marine fish are for everyone. <laughs> Let's see if Casper wants to remember the last time he missed the rat and bit my hand. So this time I'm going to use some forceps just to keep my hand a little further away. Casper, you want to eat, bud? Want to eat, bud? There you go, buddy. There you go. There you go. The other day I talked to you guys about breeding boas and pythons as well as colubrids, kind of a how-to thing. So I figured I would still continue that series a little bit with blue tongue skinks this time. And in particular, I'll start with northern blue tongue skinks. They're a little bit of a hybrid between our colubrids and our pythons when it comes to cycling. Basically what you do is you cool them down like a colubrid, but not as dramatic. With the northerns, we only cool them down to about 72, 73 degrees, but we take them off of food just like we do our colubrids, where we let them clean out at full temperatures for probably about two to three weeks then we actually drop them down to about 72 no heat pad no anything like this and they actually go and they hibernate for about two months sunrise certainly looks like she's ready to eat too there you go girl There you go, sweetheart. At the end of the two months, we do exactly what we do with the colubrids. We slowly turn the heat on and start feeding them, offering them food and stuff like that. What typically will happen is somewhere between one and two weeks out of hibernation, the males will actually shed out, and that's usually the sign that they're ready to breed. Now, what's interesting is that it seems to be a pretty small window when it comes to blue tongue skinks. In our experience, most males will only breed for maybe about two weeks, but the good news is you can breed them two or three times a day, and the actual copulation only takes about 60 seconds seconds or so, but the cording can sometimes take 15 or 20 minutes, and with these guys, when you put them together, if you don't watch them, they could potentially kill each other, so it's kind of a boring task. You put a male in, you just watch it, watch it, watch it, and then hopefully it'll breed. The good news is once they start breeding, they typically breed super quick, and we can easily roll through 10, 20, 30 females within a pretty short period of time. Blue tongue skinks are actually live bearers, so after you breed them one to three times, we typically like to breed three times, usually within a couple week window. If we have three copulations from a male, we just shelf them. But there are some breeders that literally only breed once, and once they see a verified copulation, they basically say, all right, the female is ready to go. After they become gravid, within a few months, they actually have litters of babies. With northerns, that litter is typically somewhere between eight and maybe 15, somewhere in that range. Believe it or not, this girl here was actually produced back at the end of May. That's that's right, literally less than seven months and it's almost an adult. I always love feeding Crackle because he's always happy to eat. Here you go, Crackle. Here he goes. 
How awesome is that? And that's what's so neat about walnuts and a lot of blackheads is they won't even like strike a lot of times. They just open their mouth and they start to eat it. My Eastern Blue Tongue Skinks are actually in hibernation. So here's just another beautiful classic Northern that we have here. And we do actually cycle our Easterns a little different than our Northerns. We actually will put them into a little bit cooler hibernation state. Again, the same thing. We clean them out. We put them down for about two months. But rather than dropping it into the low 70s, we literally drop it down to about 62 degrees. It's just because where they're from within the New South Wales area it actually gets pretty cold during the winter and if you don't cool them down enough at least in our experience we haven't had as much success when it comes to breeding them Then of course there's all kinds of stuff like Centralians, there's Westerns, there's Indonesians with the Marukis and the Irian Jais and so like that. And they're all just slightly different, but I wanted to give you kind of the overview of the Easterns and Northern Australian ones, which are the ones that we work predominantly with. And let me know in the comments if you like these kind of how-to breeding things, because I could still keep doing them. Let me know what else you'd like me to cover. I'm happy to do it. And with all that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here because it's about 8 o'clock at night and it's about time to go home, get my stuff done at home, sleep a little bit, get up and start another beautiful day here at the Reptarium and over at BHB. I hope that you guys have an amazing day or whenever you happen to be watching this vlog. Your support is so amazing to me and I truly love you guys so much. It's going to be an absolutely incredible year. I'm just sure of that. <laughs> Regardless, do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. Make a comment because I love reading about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.